example, we're going to be dealing with a, a rigid tank, so the volume is constant. And this example is more of an exercise in in reading the charts and and figuring out if you know where to where to look in the charts. And so we have a mass um, of 1.4 kilograms. It's saturated liquid, and it's at 200 degrees Celsius. And at this state, 25% of the volume is occupied by the water, and the rest is air. So we have mass is equal to 1.4 kilograms, and then the 0.25 is occupied. Uh, uh, twenty-five percent of the total volume is occupied by water, and it says now heat is supplied to the water until the tank contains saturated vapor only. So we do not have um, quality equations in this example because we're going straight from a saturated liquid to saturated vapor, and we need to determine uh, a the volume of the tank the final temperature and pressure and the internal energy change of the water. So first thing is um, we need to find out the volume of the tank. So we are told at the initial state it is a saturated liquid and it is at 200 degrees Celsius. So looking in our tables A-4 it's it gives you the, the temperature or your everything is given in temperature and you have your PSATs and, and everything and so we're going to look for a temperature of 200 degrees Celsius which is way down here on the bottom and so it says it's at a saturated liquid so we know our specific volume is 0 0.001157 meters cubed per kilogram so VSAT or VF saturated liquid is equal to 0 0.001157 meters cubed per kilogram and so we multiply this so our volume of water is equal to our mass times our specific volume And that is going to give us 0.0016198 meters cubed. So that is our volume of the water that is inside our rigid tank. So now it says 25% of that, or 25% of the total volume is water. So to find the volume of the tank, so we'll it's going to be our volume of the water divided by 0.25 and that is going to give us a volume of 0 0.006479 meters cubed so that is A Here's our volume of the tank. Now, problem or statement B, the final temperature and pressure. So, this is where you kind of need to think about what's what's going on, especially with the rigid tank. So, you have the initial specific volume is given as 0 0.001157 meters cubed per kilogram. And now we found our volume of the tank, which is 0 0.006479 meters cubed. So no matter what happens between state 1 and state 2, the volume of the tank stays the same. So our volume stays constant as 0 0.006479 meters cubed. And now we need to find the specific volume that the saturated vapor, or, or, the, or the value of the specific volume for the saturated vapor. So we have a volume of 0 0.006479 meters cubed and we need to divide that by our total mass 
because the mass doesn't change. There's you're not adding more water, you're not taking any out, so that that stays constant. So when you divide that out, your specific volume for your saturated vapor is 0 0.004628 meters cubed per kilogram. So that is what our saturated vapor needs to be. So now you're going to look in your saturated vapor tables and you're just going to pretty much go through them until you see a value that's 0 0.004628. So this first chart go all the way through and you don't have anything. So now going to your second chart, you're going to go down until you find 0.004628 and it is in between these two values. Let's get a highlighter. So 0.004628 lies right in between those two. So most likely during a test they're just going to have you pick one that's closest but since we're just working out this example, we're going to do some linear interpolation and we're going to find out what these actual values are. So we have a temperature of, and I'm just going to use the equation of a line because that's how I do linear interpolation. Y2 minus Y equals M X2 minus X. That's that's my way. I know there's other fancier ways or little equations that y'all use, but so I'm going to determine M. So M is going to be my slope. So it's going to be 370 minus 373.95 over and I'm going to use 0 0.004953 0 0.004953 minus 0 0.003106 and that is going to give me a value of negative 2138.6 and that's my slope so my y2 See, okay, these are my y values. So this is my, uh, where am I going to put this? So m is equal to your change of y over your change in x. And so my y2 value is going to be 370. And this y value is the one I'm trying to find because that's my, that, that's my final temperature is equal to the slope and x2 is the specific volume associated with uh, with the temperature of 370 so that's 0 0.004953 and my x is my specific volume of the temperature that I'm trying to find so my specific volume um, this x is actually that right there. So 0 0.004628 So once I do all this, I get a temperature of 370.7 degrees Celsius. So that is my final temperature. And it also asks for the pressure. So now we're going to do the same thing but instead of using the slope for the temperature, we're going to use the slope of the um, of the pressures. So for I guess I could use a so temperature, yeah. So so for pressures, my slope is going to be. 21,044 minus 22,064 
and again it's going to be the same the same specific volumes associated with each one so it's going to be 0 0.004 and 3 0 0.004 and 3 minus 0 0.003106 and once I do all that I should get a a number that's negative 55 552,246.89 so again just using the equation of a line 4 minus P is equal to our slope and are multiplied by the change of our specific volumes associated with what we're trying to find. So that's going to give you a pressure of 21,223.48 kilopascals. So that is all it's with problem or part B. And now we need to find the internal energy change of the water. So internal energy, well, you guessed it. We're going to do linear interpolation again to find what our value is. So we have... 2230.1 minus uh, I'm not going to try to remember all this 2230.1 minus again we're using saturated vapor so you got to look in, in this column so it's 2230.1 minus 2015.7 so minus 2015.7 over 0 0.004953 minus 0 0.003106. And that is going to give me 1116,080.13. And so our equation becomes 2230.1. Minus u is equal to our slope minus point zero zero four six two eight, and so our u is equal to um two thousand one hundred and ninety two. Point three seven kilojoules per kilogram. That is our U two. Our U one. So we can just read it straight off the table since it's given as two hundred degrees Celsius. Our U one in this case is. Oh, need our race. Is now we're looking at the saturated liquid. I know we were doing saturated vapor over here. But now our U1, our initial state, was a saturated liquid. So our U1 is in this table, so it's 850.46 equals 850.46 kilojoules per kilogram. So our change in internal energy is 2192.37 minus 850.46 kilojoules per kilogram and we have oh I didn't even do that out okay 2192.37 minus 850.46 so that gives us 1341 0.91 kilojoules per kilogram 
but it wanted it, it did not want it per unit mass. So the internal change, energy change of the water. So it did not want it per unit mass of, of water, so we need to multiply our our little u by m, so our total change is m times little u. Uh, I guess there's no difference, just the font size. So it's 1.4 kilograms times 1341.91 kilojoules per kilogram, and that gives us equals 1878.91. I'm just going to run up to 7 kilojoules. So that is our total change in energy. So that means we're adding energy into our system. And positive number means we're, it's, it's a QN. It's, um, it's heat being or energy coming into the system. So that is how we're going to do this problem. There's Just be careful because it says 0.25 or... 25% of the volume. Um, a lot of these thermodynamics problems deal with with percentages, and and I'm going to work a problem later on that deals with um, a heat exchanger, and it's very complex, and it's just a, a bookkeeping exercise. But these, like I said at the beginning, you just have to know at what point of the or what part of the chart you're, you're looking at um we started as a saturated vapor or saturated liquid and we ended up as a saturated as a saturated vapor and you just have to remember that as a rigid tank your volume stays constant so if you have any further questions just let me know in the comment section below and i'll do my best to get back to you